Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Back in the book of Genesis. Genesis being a Greek word that means generation or creation. And the Hebrew name for the book is Barashith, which is to say in the beginning, which really gets it said. In the beginning what? In the beginning, God created this earth to be inhabited. It wasn't void and without form. But after Satan's rebellion, as we learned yesterday uh, in Jeremiah chapter 4, it became void and without form. Many people confuse this flood called the Catalbo with the flood of Noah. And when you read Genesis 4, you notice God said, I destroyed every bird every city. Well now, in Noah's flood, we had boards right, birds right aboard the ark. And uh, the old raven, when he was turned loose, he didn't even come back. And all the trees weren't destroyed because the dove turned loose, brought back an olive branch. You know how long it takes to grow an olive branch? Longer than the so-called flood was, the flood waters. And um, so, that flood was not all inclusive destruction as the overthrow of Satan was. So again, the point being made, God doesn't create anything without form. It always has a purpose. It is man that destroys it or brings it down. In this case, it was Satan and those that followed him. So having said that, there's one thing you need to remember from the last lecture, and that's what a polysendentan is. That's the word and. In verse 2, it states, and the Spirit of God moved. That's, every time you read the word and, that's what it means. There's a lot more meant than is written. So you have to pick up on that. And with that having been said, let's go ahead and let's pick it up, if we may, with a word of wisdom from our Father. Verse 3, as we continue in this great book of Genesis, chapter 1. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Verse 4, and God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now, what, what is this light? Uh, let's, you're going to be asked this, so you want to pay attention. You're going to be asked, well, the stars, the moon, the sun hasn't been created yet. Well, what is this light? And you would really um, be cornered if you didn't know. Go, go with me, if you would, to the great book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 23. Listen to it. This is the eternal temple. Revelation, chapter 21, verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. The very Lamb of God being the light thereof. So that's the way you explain that particular light. Also, if, you, if somebody wants further proof, um, the great book of St. John, chapter 1. Remember, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word be, uh, was God. And then in verse 5 of that same first chapter of St. John, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. That's John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Naturally, that's Messiah, the Son of God. Verse 8. He was not that, John was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And um, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Naturally, you know, and many people say, well, that's talking about the Son of God. Well, if we were to continue on in St. John over to the 14th chapter, what you would read is the words of Christ that would say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why? They're both one. Emmanuel, God with us. He is that light. And that is the light that wherever you are, if you have that truth, 
and you can see it and understand it, uh, uh, then you don't have to worry when someone says, well, how can Christ sit at the right hand of God when they're one? Well, you answered your own question if you'll stop and think. They are one. So having said that then, you, you'll be asked, why is there light? The light was God. He lightens and covers darkness everywhere when you're in him. Verse 5, here comes another and, which means, and the Spirit of God moved. What did he do this time? And God called the light day, and, and, um, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And there you have the first one. And God is the divider of time and light. He's our all in all. He is our Father. Verse 6, and there it goes again. The Spirit of God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Uh, and uh, naturally, the firmament was all above. It protected this earth in its perfect condition from all of its um, the rays that would damage and so forth. And, but it came down. And what did we have after the firmament came down? Next verse, please. Verse 7. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. There was, then you had seas and oceans. Verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven. That's where it came from. And the evening and the morning were the second day. There we have, uh, incidentally, when we say second day, what did we read in Second Peter in the last lecture, in verses 6, 7, or 8, that you were not to be ignorant of? You're not to be ignorant of what? The fact that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years to man. So how, what is the second day? Was it 2,000 years? Is that why that if you take the seven days of creation, that's 7,000 years, <clears throat> you add the six that we have now on to it, four before Christ, two after, 6,000, um, that would be seven and six is 13. And when we go up and we find many of these animals that were in that instant freeze or overflow in both Russia and in our tundra in Alaska, it dates 14,000 years ago. Might think about it. Am I, am I saying that's a fact? Well, it is a fact that uh, that's what the animals date. And it is a fact that God told you not to be ignorant of how long a day is with him. Verse 9, to continue. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And there it was. We have it all laid out now. There are water, oceans, and seas on earth. And um, verse 10, And God called the dry ground earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And um, it was not chaotic. It was not destruction. It was good. He is revamping and reclaiming this earth from the catastrophe, that is to say, the chaotic overthrow of Satan. Verse 11, and we have another polysendenton, and uh, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ruach. Uh, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit, after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. That means it was perennial. It means that year after year it would reseed itself. It would be self-sufficient. It would take care of itself. That's the way our God makes things, kind after kind. Twelve, and the earth brought forth grass and herb-yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself 
after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Uh, God appreciates things being put in place and establishing fruit and vegetables for man because he knows already he's going to create man flesh this time, not a spirit body as they were in the first earth age, but a flesh man that will have to live from the earth because he will be formed from the earth. Even today, if you take minerals or vitamins, they, they must, be, have, must have been organic taken from the earth or you can't digest it. If you're going to take on iron, you've got to get it from a plant whereby it is organic or it would kill you. If you eat flesh of an animal, if it's a clean animal that has eaten grass or grain or something from the earth, for it also came from the earth. That's clean food, and that was Father's plan, and you can see it as he establishes and sets things forth. Verse 13 to continue. And the evening and the morning were the third day. There we have three times passed by. Verse 14, to continue, another polythendent, and in the holy Ruach, the Spirit of God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs. What, what are they for again? They are for signs and for seasons and for days and years. It's our time clock. Our solar calendar is absolutely, positively correct, right? Every year, year in, year out. Not like months or moons, as people call them, um, because months are not uh, accurate. The, uh, one month is, is not a full 30-day period or, of a solar month. But when one is wise enough to understand God's calendar, uh, the solar calendar, there's no problem. And for certain people, they go by the moon. Uh, unfortunately, all prophecies given concerning Satan and darkness are given in months or moons. All prophecies given concerning God's children are given in days, solar. Verse 15, And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Now, here now, we have a different light than the light mentioned in that first day, and that light being the very light from God himself, truth, and his guidance, his power, his healing hand, his wonderful word that became flesh and walked among us, he himself. 16, and God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, that was the sun, of course. And the lesser light to rule the night, being the moon, of course, as we had foresaid, he made the stars also. He put them all in the exact place where they should be. It is amazing in the great book of Job. Poor old Job, after listening to 38 chapters of nonsense, of ratchet jaws, of people who claimed they knew God and were Bible scholars. They knew nothing. But God finally would tell Job, get up from there and stand up and act like a man. Gird yourself up. That means be ready for action. Where were you when I placed all the stars in the place that they are? Where were you when the sons of God uh, sang for joy? the little star being God's children in the heavens. Finally, he began to listen to God and God's own creation. This was back even into the first earth age. In other words, God was saying, why would you turn to a bunch of knuckleheads for advice when you've got me, the living God, the one that did all this, that put it all in place? Why would not you come to me? And that's, you'll... Never find a better piece of advice and go to God, not man. That's why he sent you this letter. Next verse, please, verse 17. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give uh, light upon the earth. And so we have it. Beautiful. 
18, and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. Not chaotic, not disorder. When God fixes it, it is good. Verse 19, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now you want to pay attention here. I'm going to teach you something that I would not want to debate it, but it's food for your thought. Listen carefully. Verse 20. And God said, Let the waters, let what? Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth, and in the open firmament in the heaven. Now, I must tell you that this word life, as you read it in the English, is the Hebrew word nephesh, which means soul. So he created something, and I must tell you that nephesh is translated 472 times in God's word as man, soul. It is translated 282 times where it could be man or something else, a soul. So then it, the question comes, well, then do animals have souls? Well, it's referred to them sometimes. But what people is it? This is simply food for your thought, supplication. What people does grow their food from the water and basically live from the sea, the water, the fish, the, that type of food? We know it's wheat, uh, rice growers. They grow their wheat in the water and from the water. And most of their living is made from the waters. And their history through their dynasties goes back much further than our history. And, and I'm talking history here, not biblical scripture. But their, their history goes back many dynasties past what ours does. Uh, but uh, just, just something for you to think about and to ponder. But many of you, even your little cross-reference in, in your King James Bible will give you the correct translation for life is soul. Think about it. Verse 21, And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly, it was fertile, after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. God made waterfowl, he made landfowl, he made um, animals of the ocean, and he made animals of the land. And it was good. God has always loved animals. 22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. Let them repopulate it. 23, And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And here we come to that fifth day, and so it was. How long again is the day with the Lord? A thousand years. Verse 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things and beast of, of uh, the earth after his kind, and it was so. There, there you had them. Okay. 25, And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, kind after kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Now, some of these are clean, some of them are unclean. Some of them were made to partake of by man, and others were made to keep filth clean from the earth, whereby you have a perfect order of things. That's why it was good, and that's why God always creates things good. 26. And God said, let us make man, what day is this now? This is the sixth day. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. I want him to look just like we look in our spiritual bodies. And let them have dominion over, now did it say here, let them be farmers? No, it didn't. What does it say then? 
Let them have dominion over the fish. They're going to be fishermen of the sea and over the fowl of the air, hunters, and over the cattle, herdsmen, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. But you didn't have somebody to till the soil. Didn't tell them that. Well, you'll find out why in the next lecture. So just sit on that and remember these people created on the sixth day were hunters, fishers, and that sort of thing. 27. So God created man in his own image. They look, as they looked in a spiritual body, they looked exactly the same way in the flesh body. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he him. And naturally here, who did God create in his own image? Christ. If you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. Okay. When that time would come. But here, these men and persons were created and made in their exact image. They looked the same. Verse 28, And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish. Now, not plenish, not the first time, but replenish the earth which I destroyed from the first. Got it? Replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Uh, and you replenish it, populate it, you hunt, you fish. We still don't have a farmer. Don't worry, we shall. And so, so it was. I, I, I want you to know, many people will say, well, God is talking to the Holy Spirit. No, the polysendent and Anne and um, uh, God being one. We only have one God. You know, and it's, it's sacrilegious for you to ever think that we have two gods. That will not fly. We only have one. But whereby, in as much as he created man in his own image, he included himself in our image. Meaning, if you have seen that son, you've seen him. Meaning, he saw fit to come in the flesh body himself to show us how to get it done. And uh, that's a different story for a different time, but it is a simple fact of the scripture and how it should be. Verse 29 to continue. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. Now, again, uh, what you want to understand we, we will be speaking of a different tree in a chapter hence. And it is a tree which is this body. This is the trunk. These are the limbs of that human tree. And we will have a tree of knowledge of good and evil, which means Satan. And we will have the tree of life, which is Christ. And after certain people are created in the next lecture, then they will have to ply between those and that controversy continues to this day between Christ and Satan. I don't know, which side are you on? Well, naturally you're on the Christian side. You love the Lord and the Lord loves you. But remember, Satan is a deceiver. And inasmuch as everyone is made in their exact image, you better be able to tell the difference you better know how to discern spiritually. But he, uh, the fruit trees that are good, he gave to us to partake of, to enjoy. Let's go with one more verse, 30. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, there's that word again, I have given every green herb for meat and it was so. And, and so it is that we would live from the earth and by the earth. Now, uh, it's important that you note that our Father 
when he created and um, uh, loving his children, what did he do back in verse 27? I don't want you to ever forget this. In verse 27, the image of God created he them, male and female created he them. In other words, he created both man and woman for each of these people. Well, who are they? They're the races of the world. He created one of each race, a pair from each race to populate this earth and replenish it from the first and they are made in the perfect image of what they were from before in their spiritual bodies. And so it is. That is a, quite a step for some people and it shouldn't be, it's very simple. You will have certain mythologists that will come in and say to you, well, you don't understand, there was a woman named Lilith that Adam partook of first. But that's mythology, there was no Lilith. There was honest, God-fearing hunters and fishers, people of every race, to repopulate this earth whereby they would know and understand. I know there are not many people that teach this, but then big surprise, right? Uh, um, they would rather have racial problems rather than to know and to understand that God's on the throne. He's in control. And he created people as they are. Be quiet. That's the way he wanted them. He created them that way in the first earth age. Mm -hmm. and, and he looked then, it was good. And guess what? As you continue on in verse 31, listen carefully. And God saw everything that he had made, every last bit of it, okay? All inclusive. And behold, it was very good, not just good, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And there you have the sixth day creation. God created all people, all the races on that sixth day. There, I will be in the next lecture taking you into the Hebrew a little bit to show you there is a difference in the man created on the eighth day than these created on the sixth day. Not that it's any preference or that if they have any priorities other than it would be through that man, Eth Ha'adam, that Christ would come. And through that woman, Mother Eve, who would be the mother of all living for one simple reason. It would be Christ that would come through her womb, umbilical cord to umbilical cord, that would give eternal life or you're not living, you're gonna die. Therefore, he had this plan of salvation put in place and complete as he restored this earth from its chaotic condition after the fall of Satan, whereby man could, could, would have the opportunity to better himself and through this, through his plan of salvation, he saw fit himself, I mean the creator of all things, to be born of woman. This is why in uh, 27, chapter 27, that, um, uh, that God would create in our own image, would, you would find Eth Ha'adam used the first time there in the manuscripts. Why? because he was talking about Christ. It was all inclusive among the six day creation. But there's another creation coming. Many would disagree uh, on this subject, that's fine. But the proof is in the pudding, the proof is in the word of God. And you might say, well I, I don't understand, how can you say God created the races? Well, are you dense? Have you ever looked around in the world today? Where do you think they came from? Out from under a rock somewhere? No, God created all the peoples as they were from the first earth age. And what did he say? Not only was it good, it was very good. Therefore, when we see, you know what some would have you do is believe that certain people came from an incestuous affair between Ham and his mother. 
for to uncover your father's nakedness as it is written in Leviticus chapter 20 verse 11 uh, that um, that um, or is it 21 11 20 11 that to uncover your father's nakedness is to lie with his wife his your mother or you'll see it again in Leviticus 18 8 to uncover your father's nakedness is to lie with his wife now that doesn't change your race so it was Noah that drove Canaan away because of what Ham had done to Noah's wife and Ham's mother. It wasn't God. So it certainly didn't change his makeup because of incest. But no, God created with dignity all people and everyone should be very happy because with their race and who they are. That is not a racial thing. It is a fact of how we got here. God created each with dignity. Well, well, how can you keep saying with dignity? Because what did he say? God saw everything that he had made. That's all people. And behold, it was very good. God is happy with all the people. God is happy with his creation. So with dignity, treat each other likewise. Love the Father, the creator of all. We'll pick this up in the next lecture. You need to live and to learn from God's word because it gives you the understanding of why we are here today, maybe what many of your destiny is and what God expects from us. That's why he wrote us this letter to be analyzed and to be absorbed into your own being to know and to understand. All right, bless your hearts. Don't miss the next lecture. You listen a moment, won't you please?